I'm Anthony Newbo. Welcome to A Closer Look. In this post-Dorian environment, shelter is critical. And so I've invited the Minister Responsible for Social Services and Urban Development, the Honorable Frankie Campbell, to be my guest. Minister, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Last time we sat here, we were speculating about what kind of weather system we would have. We got our answer really quickly. I'm not sure it's the answer we wanted, but we have to deal with it. What, what was your first reaction when you thought of, because we were talking about all the precautions you'd taken and the preparations you've made, what was your first reaction when you realized this monster of a storm was bearing down on us? I thought to myself, as much as we thought we had this, yeah. maybe we need to think it again. As the figures changed in terms of intensity, yeah. um, there was a degree of, of nervousness and concern. I, I would imagine so because, and I was talking about this the week before, 100 miles an hour would have been something that was 120 miles an hour. And then we had to face 185 miles an hour and higher. Yes, unheard of, we never thought. But when we consider the conversations about climate change, yeah. um, it, it all adds up and comes together that this is the way it's going to be moving forward. And it speaks of the urgency for us, small island developing states, to join in with the larger first world countries to do our part to reduce our carbon footprint. Shelters really falls within your bailiwick. How, how difficult has it been, was it, to get your arms around, your mind around what was going to be required to deal with the fallout from this hurricane? Normally, as we approach the hurricane season, our people get together with the other agencies and we visit, inspect, and certify certain places as shelters. So that was done. We met with the disaster management team and we were prepared to the extent that we normally are. But as the numbers of evacuees um, started to increase, yeah. uh, we found ourselves um, scratching our heads and scrambling to ensure that we could meet the challenge. Because how many shelters? You have some shelters in Nassau, you have some shelters in Grand Bahama, you had shelters in Abaco. At this time, we have a total of 14 shelters, um, two in Grand Bahama, one in Abaco, and I think one in Eleuthera, and the other 10 here in New Providence. Obviously, uh, that could be challenging for the amount of people you have to deal with. Yes, it is challenging, considering that usually, after the all clear is given, a day or two, shelters are cleared and those establishments, those institutions are able to return to normal. Um, we have this irregular situation where we are convinced that we're gonna be housing persons for some time yet. For, for a while, eh? Yes, yes. You had to think of both major islands. You have to think of, well, the keys as well. Yes. Right now, you have a round number, an approximate number of people you are presently sheltering. At present, we're sheltering about 2,000 persons. Yeah. But that, that is minimal compared to the persons we know to have been displaced yeah. or compared to the persons we know that were directly affected. We're talking about about 73,000 persons affected about 21,000 homes affected yeah. in varying degrees, some with roofs blown off, others you can only see where they used to be. And so there are varying degrees of, of damage and the assessment is general in the first instance and then it has to be particular to each resident because there's a difference. And there's been talk about this general talk in the public domain. Is there a serious discussion going to be had with respect to building hurricane shelters, real hurricane shelters, yes. not using a church or a school 
yes. hurricane shelters built to specific standards? Purpose-built buildings, yes. buildings that will have the general area, buildings that will have the capacity to withstand extreme winds, buildings that are high enough that will withstand some of the flooding that are associated with it, buildings that will be there when the winds go off the charts, 180, 200. Right now, I think the charts go to 200. Uh, this Hurricane Dorian, I'm sure, is going to cause them to rethink the charts. Revisit all of that. Yes. I, and I was going to talk about this later on. Dorian is going to cause a lot of people to revisit a lot of things. Yes. Has this Dorian experience given you some thought, is giving the government some thought, about how you reconfigure or think about reconfiguring your ministry and the services that you offer? Well, the answer is yes. Uh -huh. um, the discussions are ongoing. It is said in some circles that we in the Bahamas are going to become a, a study of sorts. Yeah. Um, we, we must study ourselves. Yeah. We must study the way we have done things and tweak or change accordingly. Our preparations are going to be more intense because when we would have said in the past that we are preparing for the worst and hoping for the best, this worst that occurred was the farthest thing from our mind. So I think we're going to try to be as realistic as possible. I believe not only for us, the practitioners who, who prepare and care for, but even the citizenry are going to have a change of mindset when you talk about evacuations. Um, should they be mandatory or not? Should they be adhered to or not? Should um, facilities be provided? Should transportation be provided? That's a whole conversation that we're going to have to have in earnest. And, and this, people are going to have to understand that they're going to have to decide whether they want to be safe yes. or whether they want to just be free to do whatever it is they want to do. And, and also decide whether their negligence or lack of concern for their own safety should also endanger others. I'm talking about persons who uh, first responders, law enforcement officers, who having taken time out to give the warnings and still find themselves being called by the very same people they would have warned to move. I don't know how fair that is. Yeah, we're going to talk some more about shelters and food and supplies, but we've got to take a break. And we'll be back with more Minister Responsible for Social Services and Urban Development, the Honorable Frankie Campbell, after this. Welcome back to A Closer Look. I'm Anthony Newbo speaking with the Minister Responsible for Social Services and urban development, the Honorable Frankie Campbell. Food, supplies, clothing, just pouring in. Obviously, the world loves the Bahamas. Uh, we have a handle on all these gifts to a point where we're comfortable. They're getting to the right places. Your people in shelters are being properly serviced. Mr. Newbo, let me first say that I'm pleased at the level of participation, the level of donations that have been coming forward. It speaks to the Bahamian spirit, the brotherly love that we have one for the other. It speaks also to our relationships regionally, the CARICOM um, nations, Sedema. They were calling even before the All Clear was given. And they found their way to the Bahamas and found their way at NEMA, sharing their expertise, getting involved, rolling up their sleeves, and lifting boxes and doing whatever they had to do. 
and then the international community. It says that we are the friendly people that we claim to be and that we have relationships both locally, regionally, and of course internationally that has resulted in the outpouring of love that has been shown. And I'm satisfied that our people are doing a good job. Of course, there's always room for improvement. We must appreciate that this devastation created some impediments that would have resulted in there being difficulty in getting to certain points immediately. But with each passing day, there is improvement in terms of uh, distribution, in terms of uh, storage capacity, in terms of organizing our reception. And I'm just grateful to every individual who brought one bag of sugar all the way up to every international organization that brought in thousands, millions of dollars. There's a place for all of them, and we are grateful for their participation and support. These gifts, supplies, food, clothing, these are hurricane-related. Yes. yes. There's no way any of this gets into the Ministry of Social Services only and commingles with what you're doing. No, this is only to the extent that social services is involved in the distribution thereof, but there is no commingling. Yeah. Let's, let's do this as methodically as we could, given the fluidity of the situation. What are your, what were, are your short-term goals? Well, immediately thereafter, our priority was bringing people to safety. Right. Um, in the absence of any kind of assessment, it was important to bring persons from those two major islands and surrounding keys to a place where they could be dry, where they could be clothed, where they could be fed, um, where they could have an opportunity to determine what would have happened to their loved ones and make the necessary connections. And so we've done that and persons are comfortably housed, persons are being fed on time some assessments have been done. Yeah. And so now we're moving into that second phase while we're still doing some recovery, mm -hmm. some search and recovery. We're also simultaneously are looking at and discussing and firming up various plans to now reverse the, the, the trend of persons who would have come we, we, we're looking now to start reversing that trend and sending persons back home. You want to send some people back? Yes. That, I am sure, must require, does require, some discussion as well. Yes. Huge discussion. Yes, and I can share with you, you. Yeah, because you're talking about resettlement, if you will. Yes. yes. And that is something that's got to be discussed. Well, uh, among the things that we're discussing, we're satisfied that there are uh, institutions, uh, let's use one for example, Baker's Bay in Abaco, um, they are still functional. Mm -hmm. They would have employed a number of persons in Abaco. They are concerned about their immediate cleanup and restoration. So we're talking to persons like that, both in Abaco and Grand Bahama, to find out to what extent they're able to welcome back their employees and assist with the housing. Those are persons, once we get those numbers, they can immediately be transported back to help start with the cleanup. Secondly, there are persons whose houses were affected in different degrees. So let's look at those persons whose houses got minor, minimum, medium kind of, of damage that we could assist immediately with top, with shingles, with a few windows with a door if necessary that would make the house watertight, airtight, that they can go back and start the, the, the cleanup. Um, this kind of disaster would have happened in other places. And so we are also um, in discussions with persons who would have been involved in those restorations to see what short-term, medium-term kind of housing that mm -hmm. could be put in place. We must clean up both islands, and we need the help of those persons who were evacuated 
to become involved in the cleanup for that to happen in a timely fashion. Because whatever happens on those islands, I imagine there were people working there and living yes. there. Yes, yes. They, the, they should be those, but first, the first choice, the first well, opportunity. Well, to I can say to you, Mr. Newbold, that Grand Bahamians in general, mm -hmm. um, Abaconians, they love their islands. Uh, they would come to New Providence when they must, and they would only spend the time that they have to. And so those persons want to be back home, and we want them to be back home. We just want to ensure that the conditions are fit and proper for them to be back home. Speaking of that, the Minister of Environment, who I will talk to at another point, issued a statement saying that the mud, pigeon pea, no rebuilding there for at least six months, and it could be extended further. That further makes the challenge bigger. Yes. Because whomever the people were who lived there, certainly for the next six months, they ain't going to be living there, even if they need to go back to Abaco to help in construction or reconstruction, whatever you call it. Mr. Newbold, I, I sympathize with the persons who would have lived in those areas. I sympathize with all of the families who lost loved ones. I'm aware, though, that prior to this disaster, there was concern expressed for the safety and security of persons who would have been inhabitants of the areas you mentioned. And the concerns were real then. They are manifest now, and the government still have those concerns. It is with those concerns that we've put in place through the Minister of Environment, the no-build, because the way forward must be well thought out and calculated. Okay, we ought to take another break before we finish this. And we'll be back with more of a closer look. The Minister responsible for social services and urban development after this. Welcome back to A Closer Look. Anthony Newbo speaking with Minister Frankie Campbell. We're talking about getting people back as quickly as possible to their normal lives. Yes. Whatever's going to be passing for normal now. Um, everybody's going to have to pitch in and help these people sure. to reestablish themselves, including the businesses, banks, et cetera, et cetera, that operated certainly in Abaco. Well, as, it's interesting you say that because I don't know how many people, when, when we talk about reconstruction and relocation, consider the importance of the commercial side. It is important for commerce to be returned to both islands. Mm -hmm. They are number two and three in terms of what they contribute to the consolidated fund, what they contribute to the national economy of the Bahamas. And so that too creates another urgency for wanting to ensure that they return to normal in the shortest possible time that the conveniences that were once offered continue to be offered and maybe even improved. We've got to ensure that businesses get the support that they need from banks, yeah. from their insurance companies. We've been in discussions with um, the banks, who many of whom have already responded favorably with the view of having them extend the payment period or, or give waivers for persons who have mortgages to allow them to use those funds for reconstruction and repair. Insurance companies have already begun to, to respond. This is going to change the mindset in so many different ways because persons who didn't consider insurance yeah. may have a greater appreciation for the value. Insurance companies may see an opportunity to better educate the public about the various different packages. Um, there are packages for, for just the contents. If you are a tenant, 
that some may not have considered. There, there are packages for the roof mm -hmm. and, and there are packages for flooding. So, so persons are gonna take another look at the whole question of security and the ability to rebuild after a disaster. We're talking about all of this. How's your staff holding up? The staff of the Ministry of Social Services and Urban Development. They're the greatest, they're the best in the world. Yeah. I haven't had any complaint from any of the shelters relative to the staffing and the management of the shelters. Mm -hmm. Our people are working around the clock. Our people suffered and are victims on the two affected islands. Yeah. I have a pregnant social worker in Abaco who I'm begging, please come to New Providence, allow us to send someone in to replace you. Yeah. And even though she lost her home and all of her possessions, she is still determined and she's resisting me to stay and help. Our people are working overtime, 10 shelters continuously. Yeah, and, and of course, uh, I'm not sure how many people really think about this. Everybody's thinking Dorian. Yes. How do we deal with the people from Dorian? That does not stop what you do on a daily basis as the minister and ministry of social services, oh, no. you still have clients. Oh no, it doesn't. The remainder of our islands are expected to function as usual. Our centers here in New Providence still have the New Providence clientele that they must service. And so we have to multitask. We have yeah. persons who do the day shift at one of our centers and then go to a shelter and do the afternoon shift or the night shift. And I'm only begging my director, as willing as they are, to ensure that there is no burnout, both physically and psychologically. Because when you, as an individual, faced with the enormity yeah. of these complaints, there is a psychological effect even on the service provider. And so we're working closely with the Ministry of Health that is providing that psychological assistance for yeah, us. Because I was gonna ask, the psychiatrists and psychologists, they don't really work for you in the Ministry of Social Services. We, Do you have those kinds of people on staff? We, we don't have them necessarily on staff, but we have them on contract. Mm -hmm. But that's under normal circumstances. Yeah. Um, in this situation, We've, we've partnered with the Ministry of Health and they're providing that, that segment of it. Um, we are ensuring that those services are available to our external and internal um, clients. I, I say to people that even persons like myself as the minister, I don't feel that there's anything wrong if I were to sit and have a chat with somebody to make sure that, that I'm dealing with it as an individual. Yeah. You know. Your budget must have gotten blown out the window. <laughs> fortunately, fortunately, there were some plans and preparation by the government in terms of the preparations we would have made with the IDB, mm -hmm. in terms of our paying the CRIF insurance, Nice. Um, and so there are some resources that we could draw on immediately. We're grateful for the assistance and commitment from the regional and, and international community. But it's going to be a while before we can actually give a final figure. Yeah, but, but for the most part, you think you, you're doing as best you can in the circumstances. I know that we're doing the best that we can I also know that not every situation is ideal. I also know that there are some discomforts out there and some people are inconvenienced and some may even be frustrated and angry. But if we didn't have that, Mr. Newbold, we wouldn't have a disaster. Yeah. And so we're managing it. We're asking for persons to partner with us. We continue to promote the, the value of partnerships 
and we are committing that we will continue to press forward to bring back a sense of normalcy in the shortest possible time. Thank you, Minister. Thank you. And thank you for watching A Closer Look. Remember, you can also watch us on Facebook and on YouTube.